welcome back welcome back another day another daily summer shredding routine just finished the work again you know what that means it's time for the gym honestly having a daily routine during the week helps a lot to help keep focus of this cut and honestly the weeks are flying by I can't believe I'm already 10 weeks down and a little less than nine, ten weeks ago, depending if you're talking w WNBF or summer shredding. It's crazy, it's crazy. But like I just said, time to work out. Just finished the pre-workout slop, as you already know. Oats and yogurt, eat it for two reasons. Crazy good pre-workout meal, because the carb content. And two, keeps me humble, you know? Eat like shit, eat like a dog, train like a dog, you know? All it is. Let's get after it. Let's get this workout in. Stop that. Stop that. Yeah, yeah. I hear him chat to the noise. Move too quick, can't stop for the talking. I hear him chat with the boys. Man, so tough, but minds keep walking. Yeah. Just too sharp with the prize. White girls let it tell me I'm awesome. Yeah. Hot like fire on the pine. If you wanna touch my please use caution. Cold like zero degrees. I'm out the cage, gotta let out the beast. Revolutionary guy, let out the streets. Locked in a cage, I'ma let out the. Let out the. Let out the. Wake up, get out the sheets. We came for one man, forget my peace. You take the west side, take on the east. I'ma put him in the cage, never let out the. Let out the. Let out the. Yeah. I hear him chat to the noise. Move too quick, can't stop for the talking. I hear him chat with the boys. Not so tough, but minds keep talking. Yeah. Just too sharp with the prize. White girls, better tell me I'm awesome. Yeah. Hot like fire on the pine. If you wanna touch my mouth, please use caution. Beg, please get on your knees. Came from the jungle, up in the trees. I got a few tricks up in the sleeve. One wrong move, I'ma let out the. Let out the. Let out the. Big shoes, check out the crease. Blow like I'm big foot, step on the beat. Make a man's run till he step out the cleats. When the whole place scream, gotta get out the. Yeah, I, I hear him chat to the noise. Move too quick, can't stop for the talking. I hear him chat with the boys. Not so tough, but minds keep talking. Yeah. Just too sharp with the prize. White girls, better tell me I'm awesome. Yeah. Hot like fire on the pine. If you wanna touch my mouth, please use caution. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Yeah. I hear him chat to the noise. Can't stop for the talking. I hear him chat with the boys. All right, guys. First, first workout of the week complete. Honestly, it wasn't a great workout, but that's kind of the new norm since I'm sprinting to lose three to four pounds a week and absolutely depleted. I think it took me four workouts, maybe five, into the workout until I actually got a pump. And that's because my carbs are so low. 225, I consider low. You may not, but that's a big contributing factor to why I was not getting a pump and the workout itself was not great. But that is the new norm, especially when I'm in such a high deficit. It's just something I'm gonna have to grind through. Honestly, all the workouts weren't too bad, but for me, anytime I can't get my bench reps at, for the same exact weight that I did prior week, I considered a bad week. So last week, I got 295 four by six, which is already down a good amount since day one. Um, and this week, I only got 295 for one set of six, one set of five, and then I had to drop down to 285 for two by six. So a slight dip there. That's a sign of some muscle loss, I think, or, being hopeful, I'm thinking it's just a bad day, just a bad workout. But considering I lost four pounds, four, maybe five, compared to last Tuesday, so Tuesday to Tuesday, one week, about four or five pounds, I'm thinking it's a little bit of a, a little bit of muscle loss there. So, got to get back to Ken's and Blair for some tacos because it is Taco Tuesday, and yes, I can still eat tacos. Thank you. 
I never do. You told me to be consistent. That's all. <laughs> Touche, Ken. Touche. All right, first things first, the base layer for Taco Tuesday, the reason I'm able to do it. I use 96.4. Ken's, what do you use? 90.10. So this is a big factor because six, extra 6% six fat in the, the, the consistency of the ground beef makes a huge calorie difference. So this is important here. This up here. You know what yeah. else is important? You can't do that. At least I can't. See that? All that cheese? Holy fucking cheese. That's 80 calories. That's 80. I can't spare that. So <laughs> what's key is you can't include cheese. Well, you could, but it's a waste of calories. I would be miserable if I didn't have you cheese can't in my include you cheese. Mean? You can't include guac and you can't include sour cream. Guac, well, which is what look, I had. Look at Blair. She got the treats in her mouth, the whole bag. <laughs> no zoom on here. <laughs> All right, guys, finished product. Ken's actually finished eating before I even started. Thanks, Ken. You she's took my, eight hours at the gym. That's true. And she's nice enough to vlog my assistant, Ken's. So what we have is seven, getting crazy, seven old El Paso shells. Pretty high fat, but also decent carb. And I need some fat in my diet. I didn't eat any all day. Nine ounces of 96.4 ground beef or sirloin. Do you know which one it is? Yours is beef. Beef. Um, a shit ton of salsa. I didn't measure any of that. Some lettuce. Didn't measure that either. And half a cup of onions. Did measure that. And then 180 grams of shrimp. All this. 850 calories. And then the rest of the macros are going to pop up like that. Um, thanks for holding camera, Ken's. This is how we've been shredding every Tuesday, right? Since day, week one. Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday, sometimes Wednesday. Every week since the start. Alright, I'm starving. I'm gonna go eat. Oh, almost forgot. Cholula. Magic. Apparently has no calories. It probably has like five calories per serving. I don't count it though. And of course, seven up in my clear cup diet. And so, as you can tell, low fat on the, the meat products. There's no rice. That's a big factor in a, in a taco. If you're someone who needs rice, then you probably don't like these. But if you do, go for it. Um, no guac, no sour cream, none of the extra, no cheese, none of all that. But a lot of food for 850 calories. All right, let's go eat. Who's your camera pup? Who's your camera pup? All right guys, it's time for the part of the video where I sit here, stare at the camera, and talk. Like I'm actually talking to someone. This part's, if you've never vlogged before, it's actually kind of hard to talk into a camera, but you get used to it. So anyways, one of the reasons I started this channel was to be another voice in the, the fitness industry that actually uses evidence and science-based practices and not just spew bullshit and antidotes. An antidote is something that works for one individual and, and it may work for them, but it doesn't necessarily work for others. And so a lot of, there's a good amount of clowns out there that will create some sort of crazy, dumb fat burner. Um, they'll lose like 20 pounds on it, it works for them. And they'll go out and sell it, they'll make money on it. And when in reality, it, there's no magic pill, there's no fat burner that's gonna make you lose 20 pounds in, in 30 days. It takes discipline, it takes uh, some knowledge of what you're doing, and the most important part, if you wanna lose weight, it comes down to calories in, calories out, or energy in, energy out. Not some stupid fat burning pill or magic pill. And so, I, w I created this channel to be another voice to preach 
um, things that I learned from Violaine, Jeff Nippard, Greg Knuckles, uh, Team 3, 3DJ, um, which has like Eric Helms and a bunch of other guys, Martin McDonald, uh, Lyle McDonald, guys like that. Violaine, I don't know, did I say Violaine? Him. So basically, I want to do my part from taking in all this knowledge and also my knowledge from NASM, National Academy of Sports Esmin, National Academy of Sports Medicine, and spew it to you guys, whoever may be watching, do my diligence to make sure we're spreading good evidence-based knowledge and not just some antidote that works for someone and may not necessarily work for you. So that's why I started a channel, <clears throat> or one of the reasons I should say. Another reason being, it actually helps me to log my weekly progression throughout this year's cut, for example. And uh, so that when I go do another cut in say next year or two years, I have this film to go back and, and look, hey, this, is, this was my current physique eight weeks out and then compare that at time of to see kind of how how I compare. Did I make gains? Do I need a lot of weight to lose, etc. Like for me, when I realized I was still pretty overweight for in terms of being in good shape for the show June 12th, I realized I was not in good shape by looking at where I was a year ago from last year's videos. And so I had to switch gears and obviously lose even more weight um but yeah so that's that's reason number two um reason number three i like creating content i i, I have a little bit of a artistic background to me even going down to a clothing brand i design all dream fit designs from scratch in adobe illustrator down to the type of stitching the fabric logo placement, color, um, you name it, sizing, all that. I do all that stuff. Um, so if you're wondering if I just buy shit, if, if you're wondering if I just buy already made products online through like Alibaba and just slap my logo on it, that's not the case at all. I create everything from scratch. Obviously I get inspirations from other, other brands, but other than that, I create everything. Getting back to point number one. Um, today, I'm gonna talk about muscle loss and if it fits your macros approach. So I mentioned earlier that I had a bad workout today. I couldn't get the same weight and reps for bench press that I got last week. And partially that is and I think that's mostly due to muscle loss. Muscle loss, one of the tail, one of the signs, like the most prominent sign of muscle loss is your strength decreases. Um, there's a couple others like weird ones, like you get diarrhea from rapid weight loss and I think you get like chills and stuff. I don't know, some weird ones, but I don't really follow those. For me, I just look at my strength week over week and usually muscle loss comes from rapid weight gain like I said in before and so if I lost a couple reps on bench week over week I, I know I lost some muscle obviously there's case of bad workouts but realistically thinking if I lost four pounds and my weight my numbers went down the following week I mostly lost some muscle um, you can obviously tell if you lose muscle just by looking at yourself in some cases for me, I can't really tell but just by looking. I do do it by strength. Now, how do you know how much weight you can safely lose in a week? There's a couple uh, evidence-based formulas that have gone around. Uh, the One of the ones that I've been using, <laughs> well, I shouldn't say using because I'm not using it. I'm just fucking sprinting. Um, is comes from research done by I believe Lyle and Martin McDonald and also Greg Knuckles um, and the formula is you take so if you know your true body fat percentage is the most accurate one coming from like a in body or a, in or a DEXA scan so say you know your true 100% it's your true body fat percentage you're gonna take that you're gonna divide it by 13 using uh, I believe Lyle's factor 
and you're gonna get a percentage. And so for me, if I take my, say, let's say I know I'm 13% body fat, 13 divided by 13 is 1%. I can lose 1% of my total body weight safely in a week without muscle loss. Um, so you're gonna take, you're gonna take 0.01 times 194, and I get 1.94 pounds a week. Now I'm doubling that, so clearly not safe. And 13 is actually the more aggressive approach. Greg Knuckles, I believe, came up with 20. So body fat divided by 20 as your uh, body weight percentage that you can lose, multiply by your body weight, and that's how much you say to lose. Now a lot of factors go into this. How hard you're training, uh, your, your protein intake, your potentially your meal timing, um, your genetic makeup, just the type of person you are, everyone's different, things like that. All those factors matter. That's just evidence based on like the average person. And so for me, I could safely lose about two pounds a week if I'm 13% body fat without muscle loss. Now, why the hell do you lose muscle if you're working out at a high intensity? That is because your body is super smart and is always looking for energy sources. And if you're severely underfed, it's gonna start tapping into your fat storage using adipose tissue, that, which is called lipolysis. So that formula that you saw that I just talked about is like the, the amount of body fat that occurs in a lipolysis on a weekly basis before tapping into muscle loss for a source of energy. Obviously your body wants to use carbs first, but if it doesn't have carbs, then it taps into your adipose tissue, your fat tissue, which is lipolysis. And so if, if those two are already low, then it has to turn to something else. And that's when you get into using your muscle loss, and your protein, your gluconeogenesis of, of the main source, which is just not good. But yeah, I, I, you, I got to do what I got to do, like I said. Part two uh, of this video is going to be quick. So as you saw, I had tacos for dinner and it's kind of a, if it fits your macros approach, honestly, everything on my plate was pretty macro friendly and mic micro friendly, I should say, except for the taco shells because they're processed. But if you're someone who likes an IFYM approach, if it fits your macros, however the hell you spell it, then you should be taking a multivitamin or some fish oil so that your body is getting all the proper micronutrients, which are the vitamins and the minerals, so that your body can properly function and operate. Uh, an analogy used in the fitness industry is your macros are the gas to your car and the micros, uh, minerals and vitamins, are the oil to your car. And so you need the oil for your machine to oper operate properly, whereas the gas is just feeding the machine. And so you need the micros to, in terms of your body, you need the micros so that everything, every organ, every function is working properly so that your body's using uh, your carbo carbohydrates as your primary source, using fat, tissue properly, um, etc. You're properly passing blood, everything. Everything that your body does, you need micros to support those functions and that's why there's the analogy of your car having oils and micros and gas to fuel it to keep going. Um, so you need your macros, carbs, fats, proteins, and you need your micros. All right. I think that's it for this video. I've stared at this camera and talked to you long enough. We're gonna do a physique update and then wrap this video up. My tripod decided to be really dumb and not let me put it mounted on it. So hopefully we're fine with this shot here. But here we go. A little over 10 weeks in, 194.4 new low weigh-in. Last video, I think I was 199.6 is my low. So crazy week 
cha uh, week change. But like I said, these next couple weeks we're really gonna make strides and I'm holding true to that. So when I look in the mirror, I see quite a bit of changes. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, one of the reasons people get coaches for preps is because they get in their head and they need someone to keep them grounded. That's what I've coached Zach for. He's not really my coach anymore, but he, he tells me how I'm looking um, so that I'm not too in my head and do stupid shit. But Hopefully you can see from there. Um, and yeah, like I said, we're gonna keep sprinting. These next couple of weeks are gonna be big and I'll really have a good sense of how ready I'm gonna be come June 12th and maybe I could tone it down with the minus three to four pounds a week. Yeah, oh, and one of the things that I forgot to mention earlier, earlier is so, it's normal to lose muscle as you diet unless you're taking some sort of steroid or human growth hormone, etc. And I don't know what the exact correct number is, but based on what a few people have said in the fitness industry, somewhere in the five to ten percent, five to ten percent of your compound lifts is normal in a diet. And obviously that depends on how aggressive you diet and the total amount of weight. But five to 10% of your bench squat deadlift loss isn't too bad. For me, I actually calculated a couple of them. <laughs> uh, deadlift actually has only dropped about four to 5%. Squat, same about four to 5%. And bench, unfortunately, has dropped like 11%. And so everyone's different. Everyone's compounds are gonna drop differently. But for me, squat deadlift <laughs> have been good. Unfortunately, I don't do classics. So I don't care about the legs. Uh, whereas bench, crazy drop. Not good, but just something that's part of the process. All right. Thanks for watching guys. Give me a thumbs up if you learned something or if you joined the vid, enjoyed the vid. Thanks.